Okay, so now let's take a look at all the different features inside this data model. So first we'll kind of go over some general geodatabase concepts uh, while looking at some of the, the specifics of the data model. So the first thing here at the very top, uh, you'll see this three rectangle or square icon here. That's a, the icon for a feature data set. And a feature data set basically contains uh, a number of different kind of features, but the features inside of it all have some kind of relationship to one another. Uh, in this case, uh, they all have a kind of a spatial relationship called a topology that we'll go over later. And the next thing we're going to go, uh, we're going to look at are going to be some tables. Uh, this icon here uh, for enclosure is a table. And basically a table is uh, a feature class that doesn't have any spatial properties. So this is uh, similar to a kind of a regular database table that uh, you might encounter uh, in a database system like uh, Microsoft Access or FileMaker. And tables are usually related to uh, feature classes that actually do have some kind of uh, spatial relationship or spatial properties like uh, polygons or points or lines. This next icon here uh, for enclosure has barriers uh, defines a relationship and uh, this is one of those relationships that I was just mentioning where basically uh, in this case the enclosure table is related to the barriers feature class. So barriers uh, is a line feature class that defines things like walls and fences uh, that we'll look at here in a second. And basically this is saying that an enclosure, which is uh, like an animal enclosure, uh, has a fence around it, so that makes sense. So these relationships are named so they basically tell you uh, what the relationship that uh, it, that it uh, represents is. So let's double click on the base map feature data set here and you'll see that there's all kinds of feature classes inside of it. The first one here uh, that we selected and added in our ArcMap before is called Area of Interest. And this is a polygon feature class, and you'll see that it has kind of, uh, this little icon that's with a couple different polygons with some dots inside of it. And this is basically uh, an, a data set that will represent uh, areas of interest to you and your garden. And uh, if we double click on this, we can look at some of the properties of this feature class. And now the feature class properties, a number of different tabs will come up. Let's start with the general tab. And uh, you'll see that it has uh, the name of area of interest and an alias, which is uh, a kind of more descriptive name, allows you to put spaces in it and things like that. And you'll see that it's polygon feature class. And down here towards the bottom, you'll see a couple properties about it. Um, we don't have uh, the M or Z values turned on. Uh, Z values are something that would be if you uh, that you would use if you wanted to store 3D coordinates. If you wanted to store not only uh, say north, south, east, west, but also uh, elevation, so or altitude. If you click on the X, Y coordinate system tab, you'll see that coordinate system that we selected uh, in the previous uh, the previous part of the video here, where uh, where we define the spatial reference for the database. Uh, the next tab of interest is the fields tab. And when you click on this, it lists all the different fields that are associated with this feature class. And it starts with uh, a couple fields that are specific to, uh, to ArcGIS, and that's an object ID, which is a unique ID for every feature inside of it. A shape field, which stores the uh, geometry of the actual feature. And then some fields that we've defined as part of the data model, uh, a unique ID uh, for this particular feature class, and then a type, uh, which defines uh, basically a subtype, uh, which contains a little bit more information about uh, this feature class. So let's look at the subtypes tab here. And on the subtypes tab, you'll, you'll see that uh, there's a number of different subtypes we defined. So in this case, an area of interest can uh, be a construction area. It could be the uh, extent of your data set. Uh, it could be a uh, event boundary. It could be the boundary of a renovation that's under place, underway at your garden. Uh, could be the boundary of where some people are performing some research on plants or animals. Uh, and then the ever-present other uh, type to catch anything that's not already defined. And you can add things to this list as you wish. The only other thing we're going to look at right now is the relationships tab, and this tells you any relationships that this feature class is involved with. So basically, uh, in this particular instance, area of interest has relationship with point of contacts. 
And basically what that's saying is that a area of interest can have contact information. So you can click on an area of interest on the map and then it will bring up the contact information for uh, anybody you'd be associated with that area of interest. And that's all we're going to look at on the feature class properties here. So go ahead and click OK to close that. So some of the other feature classes we have in here, uh, there's a barrier feature class, which you can see by the icon is a line. And as we discussed earlier, that is uh, for things like fences and walls. Uh, there's some relationships that area of interest and barrier are involved in. Uh, there's a base map feature class in which you can store a feature, kind of a generalized base map or background to any maps that you might create. Uh, down here, Bollard, that is a point feature class. You can tell by the icon, and that's for storing point features. And if you don't know what a Bollard is, uh, it's kind of like a post that is generally used to block uh, off or separate uh, pedestrian and uh, vehicle traffic areas. Sometimes uh, they can be lights uh, or other types of posts. And this uh, one right here, base map topology, a topology is a special thing for a geodatabase that uh, essentially d defines rules of geometric relationships between things. So in this, in this case, um, we can double click on this thing and, and get a little bit more information about it. So it, a topology basically defines rules between things. So in the case of maybe uh, a building and a sidewalk, you might want to define a rule that says that a building can't be over a sidewalk. Um, and this makes it so that if when you're drawing features in on your map, if you've made these things overlap, you've done some sloppy work, it'll, it'll pull those errors out and show you where they are um, based on some rules that we've defined, defined here. If you click on, click on the Feature Classes tab here, it'll list all the different feature classes that we've defined uh, topology relationships for. And then you'll see that each one has a rank. And uh, feature classes with a higher rank are less likely to, to move when you uh, try to correct the errors that come up. So, and uh, conversely, uh, features with a, feature classes with a lower rank uh, are the first ones to move um, in, uh, when we're trying to correct these things. Click on the Rules tab. You can see some of the kind of rules that we've defined for topology. Uh, in this particular case, let's uh, double click on uh, Section here. And it brings up a description of the rule that we define. And this one is called uh, area boundary must be covered by boundary of, uh, you can't read the rest of it, but it's uh, basically the boundary of uh, another area feature. And this rule, uh, if we move this window out of the way, we can see it's between section and property. And the rule that we're defining here is that essentially the uh, any sections which define kind of uh, maybe collections that you may have inside your garden or any other kind of uh, logical uh, sections that you've defined for your for your garden. This is saying that they all must reside on your property, uh, which is pretty basic. Is that you know any uh, sections uh, that you've set up for your garden have to be inside your property. Kind of makes sense, but uh, if you went and digitized a section outside the the boundary of your property, it will show up as an error. So there's lots of these different rules in here, and uh, you can add more of them or delete them as you wish. Uh, and if you go to the errors tab here, once we put some data in here, you could click this generate summary and it'll go through and analyze all of the different feature classes and look if any of them vol uh, violate any of those rules. And it'll show you which ones do and give you the opportunity to, to uh, go in and correct those. All right, and that's all we're going to look at here under topology, so go ahead and click OK. And I think that pretty much wraps up our tour of the, of the geodatabase. There are a number of different features in here, but uh, feature classes in here. But one thing I want to show you is that since there are so many, we could spend the time going through all of these. But what we've done is provided you with information about them. So if you click on any one of these, say section, <clears throat> and you click on the description tab here at the top, it should bring up, after just a few moments, a, a description of what this feature class is supposed to store. So in this case, this is a smaller administrative boundary for gardens and thematic areas. So as I mentioned, that you might want to use this to define a collection or plants um, or any other logical definition you have of your garden. We go back to the contents tab here. Uh, when you do that, it always brings up this icon. And what you have to do to get back to the previous view is hit the up one level arrow here at the left. And then it gets back to where we started. We'll go up one more level and we get out to the main geodatabase and one more level brings us back to the folder that we are working on or uh, working in originally and I think that's going to be it for this section. Alright, so that concludes lesson two. 
So today we learned how to download the data model from the Alliance for Public Gardens GIS website. We learned how to install the data model to a new geo database and change the spatial reference. Then we also took a brief tour of the features that the data model has to offer. If you need more help installing the data model or changing the spatial reference, I recommend downloading the Getting Started document from the Alliance for Public Gardens GIS website. In the next lesson, lesson three, we will learn how to digitize base map data in ArcMap. We'll also take a more detailed tour of some of the features that the data model has to offer.